Aloha this morning and we're gonna go fishing and I'm gonna take this opportunity to uh, walk you through the cart. Uh, so before we can go fishing, we gotta get everything loaded up and then we'll head to the beach. I don't know if you noticed what just happened, but I was able to just climb the cart onto the truck and some more interesting things like that are coming. All right, we're all loaded up. All I gotta do now is uh, take the camera down, get it in the truck, and then we'll go fishing. All right, I got my ice. I'm gonna get unloaded, load up the cart, and then get ready to go fish. Let's do this. All right, hopefully uh, everything uh, camera-wise has worked so far this morning. Um, if it's so, you saw me pull up. I found a spot on the beach that I wanted to test out. Uh, so I put bait on a line, cast it out, and I have it in one of my rod holders. It's meant to fish from the cart. Um, if you see me looking up, it's because I'm watching my rod uh, while I'm talking to you. But this morning, we're going to take you through the cart um, and let you see uh, some of the things I did uh, and why I did it. I forgot a few things this morning. Um, and uh, so I'm going to be showing you some pictures uh, of them later. Um, and they'll just be probably be dropped in the video as uh, I mentioned the things that I forgot to bring. Uh, so first of all, one of the first things that I did uh, was I started with an offshore angler cart. It's the Bass Pro Shops offshore angler cart. It was a pull cart, two wheel. Um, that lasted two days, two days. Uh, then I went looking uh, to put four wheels on it. Um, I found those wheels and I'll go into those here in a few, uh, but I started off, I made it a four wheel cart but it was still short. Um, and everything else that you're gonna see this morning um, has been done over the last handful of months. And uh, let's get started. So one of the first things that I did was I swapped out, uh, well, I shouldn't say one of the first things I did. Uh, one of the first things I did was I customized the existing handle um, and installed it on the cart so that uh, I could use it as a push cart and um, it worked and I fished it that way for a few months all the time taking notes figuring out what was going to work what wasn't going to work um, and uh, ultimately realized that that handle was not going to do what I needed it to do if you remember this morning uh, you saw me uh, climb the cart uh, into the truck and then take it out also that same movement is how we steer a push cart um, you push down on the back and you raise the front or you pick up on the back and you raise the back and you maneuver around um, It's how I climb stairs. It's how I climb downstairs. So that handle needed to be strong now um, There was a couple of handles on the market that I really wanted and I just couldn't get it to work out um, There was a cart that had a big uh, Box here for storage and for my camera gear and stuff. I thought that would be great I also have a tendency to walk into the water with my electronics. So um, thought I would protect myself, but it didn't work out. Um, so I ended up finding this. Um, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, it's a solid, solid handle. Now let's talk a little bit more about this handle. So if you see right down in there, right, 
my connection tubes are on the inside rail of the cart. And what that has done is that has made this cart completely strong. Now, I have 20 pounds of ice. I got all of my gear. And you saw me just tip that cart back. Front wheels off the ground, right? No movement whatsoever, right? It's also got a little bait bucket. I've hung up all of my sinkers. A um, little bit more on those. You'll notice that I have some uh, clips here. Perfect place to hang my, my towel. Um, but I'm really, really happy with the way this handle has turned out. I will point out, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it uh, by holding the camera, but it slides in and out, right? But you notice I could pick up on this, but you notice if I pull hard, it slowly starts to slide out. The candle is completely removable. And with that handle removed, I can actually tip my cart front up nose down, right? And I can hang it on a hook on the wall in the garage. So one thing I wanted to point out specifically, if you see when I slide this handle out, I'm hoping that this is turning out well in the light, right? But if you see, this is some heat shrink tubing. Um, it's typically used to uh, put on the ends of fishing rods. Um, you'll see that I've got it on the end of my sand flea rake there, whatever. But this eliminated all the wobble. It's very quiet, there's no jittering or whatever. And it allows me to secure that handle um, unless I want it to come out. So I think the handle came out really well. Um, please uh, comment below what you think. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. So I'm not doing these in order uh, that I did them, but I am doing them in order of how excited I am about them. Um, so one of the things I want to point out is that lift kit. Now that lift kit, um, aside from that handle, uh, was probably the biggest upgrade that I did um, in fact, I'm going to call the handle, the lift kit, and the wheels a three-way tie. Um, but that lift kit, uh, inside diameter, um, it's over 14 inches, right? It lifted it up to where I never have to bend down um, unless I'm pulling something out of there. But um, when I sit out here on the beach and uh, bent over at the waist, the back really starts to hurt. Um, but uh, it's just aluminum, and I'm going to zoom in. By the way, I'm not a welder, all right? and especially not with aluminum. So don't judge me on that, but I wanna to explain to you what I did here. So I took the stock angler cart, which had hollow tubing below, and I made this bottom piece, right? And then inside of those is a slightly smaller, di uh, it's not diameter, I guess, but it's a slightly smaller size so that it can fit in the top and the bottom, and then it was welded in place. So this whole, all four points have been significantly strengthened um, so there's no way that those are going to go um, anywhere. Underneath there, I can stow all my candle uh, camera gear. I can uh, put chairs. I can put just about anything that I need to. Um, but interestingly enough, once the, uh, you get it on there, the biggest thing isn't the storage. The biggest thing is the height of the cart. So when I stand up fully, I have access to everything and I never have to bend over. So the lift kit, highly recommend the lift kit. All right. So moving on from the lift kit, um, I got a little bait board here to hold my bait bucket. I'm trying to also keep an eye on my rod. So if you see me drop this and run, that's why I got a fish right now. So far, this isn't looking like a very good place to fish. But standard basket. Um, by the way, I got some bland sand fleas underneath. I got some fresh sand fleas on top. Um, got a little bait board here. This is where I would just basically keep my shrimp, my shrimp bites, or my fish bites, and my fish gum, stuff like that, hanging there. One other thing you notice that I have these little uh, carabiner, S carabiners, um, perfect for holding my weights, right? They hook right to the edge of the board. They're protected, doesn't get in the way, doesn't bounce off of anything, and it's great. Then another thing um, that I've done, I call this my bait and tying board. Uh, I'm gonna go below first. Got my tying scissors there, got my bait scissors there, etc. Um, this is just a little cutting board. There's my 11 inch pompano line. I know if I walk over here and I set a fish on that and the fork is, the nose is here and the fork is here, that's 11 inches. I also know that this is a 14 inch cutting board so I need to be hanging off an inch if it's a 15 inch fish. It's really quick measurement, by the way, I don't depend on it. Um, but it's definitely a way for me to very quickly say, this is a fish that I need to uh, measure more fully and go in. Two. One of the other aspects of this though, you'll see these three little circles and I'm gonna go in uh, to what that is. 
But before I do, I'm going to spin the camera around. I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, it's been about two and a half, three years ago now. Um, I was injured and uh, really, really tore up my left shoulder. Uh, so uh, even though I have movement, I have full uh, movement, and I can do just about anything that I need to do um, with it. One of the things I can't do is feel very well. So it damaged my ancillary nerve. And as a result of that, I feel like I've been sitting on my hand or my hand's asleep all the time. So it makes doing things like tying an FG knot difficult or tying a drop loop difficult if I'm going to do it uh, correctly. So let me walk you through what I did uh, to solve that problem. So now if you'll notice, I have flipped this cutting board over. What was three holes or three circles is now three rods. They're being held in by these black end pieces. This isn't going anywhere. Um, I keep these type of clamps with me from any rod holder on the pole. I can run down, hook to a rod holder, come up over the side, clip my line in place, wrap around, and I can tie a perfect drop loop. Um, it's, uh, I, I'm sure if you are a Pompano fisherman, you have seen all of the videos about not tying boards and rigging boards and all of those different things. This is my on the go rigging board. Now, one of the things that I forgot, and I can't take a whole lot of credit for it because I bought it on Amazon, but I will show you a picture of it later. Um, I have a tool that helps me tie the FG knot. Normally, it's hanging right under here where I keep my scissors. By the way, I put these on this little bungee uh, because I lost them. I got these through Salt Strong. In fact, I can zoom in maybe and let you see that. Maybe not. Um, love those scissors. Um, I don't know how long they're going to last, but I've had those now for about six months. These are the cheapies I get on Amazon. I buy these in bulk. They last about two weeks, um, and uh, um, but I keep them both on. Um, but this knot tying board um, and cutting board and all of those different things, dual purpose, allows me to do it. I basically bought two of the exact same cutting board. I measured it out. I drilled holes so that they all lined up. Um, I put some just this is just little half inch packs, right? Put it in there. Super strong. Haven't broken it yet. Probably tied. I don't know, two or 300 drop loops on it since I made it. Um, and it has been working out really, really well for me. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the rod holders. And real quick, I'm gonna check my line. It just had a little bump. Give me a little push. All right, doesn't look like there's anything on it. Sorry, I just blasted you with the sun. We're gonna talk about the rod holders. And I got two kinds, right? Again, Amazon to the rescue. This is just a uh, aluminum with a plastic insert rod holder. These, their only job is to hold the rods while I'm moving towards or away um, from where I'm going to fish. On one side, I have a four by. If I come around on the other side, I have a three by. Um, and you might be asking why I'm able to carry nine rods. Uh, sometimes I bring kids out, sometimes I bring guests out, etc. cetera. Um, so that's why I need to have uh, the ability to carry so many rods. Another couple of things though, um, you'll see there is a rod holder that I made from scratch. I got the two inch uh, aluminum tubing and I'm used, I made my own brackets. Now I'm sure some of the engineers or manufacturers or whatever are gonna laugh at me for doing this, but these top ones, it's just a doubled up hose clamp and then it's mounted to the rail. Down below is a single one. This uh, I got through Deerfield, thank you for that. Um, but this is just a rod holder cap. Um, I have duplicates. This and that are the exact same. Um, you'll also notice down below, I've got these pins that are uh, insert. I can move them in and out. And this is so when I'm carrying a something that I want to be um, held up, I can put that in and then it won't slide through. But these are pass-throughs. Looking through there, those are pass-throughs. They can go all the way down. So if I'm bringing a really big surf rod or my shark rod or whatever out, um, they fit right in there. Also, if you come over here, same thing, but these are not rod holders. This is my cutting and bait board holder, right? Um, if you zoom in right there, that black cap, that's one of the few things other than this top piece that is from the original angler, right? Come over here, I have the same situation. Again, I've got another rod holder. I keep my pins right here when they're not being used. Um, I'm actually gonna add a couple of more of those because 
uh, for the camera work that I do, I like to use the little blue rod holder sometimes to hold the camera. And if you come over here, you look at my other one, I'm using a, uh, a rod wrap uh, to hold my camera up in the air like that. So those rod holders um, that I made out of, I made them out of pure necessity. So again, one of the things that I forgot, and I will show you, but if you're not familiar with the offshore angler, it had some uh, clamp on rod holders. Um, and in, in practice, or in design, they look, or they look like they would work really well, but in practice, they don't. They were constantly shifting, you were constantly tightening them up. I knew that I was gonna eventually break them, so I removed them. Um, now these are completely bulletproof. Um, and like you see, I can actually catch fish uh, from these. I've caught some big fish right on this cart, uh, and that cart has never once uh, pulled over. Now, if I'm surfing for a pompano, right, I'm fine to set up on that side of the cart. But let's say I was surfing, or if I was fishing for something that I thought was going to do a bigger strike. Now, I have, I've got my... Uh, I've got my drag set really well, right? But if I was fishing for something bigger, I would come to the other side of the cart, right? And put it in place. Now, just like I did with the handle, all of the force, when I push down on this handle or I pick up on this handle, all of the force is at the strongest point, right? Same idea here. If I was fishing, if this was my big rod and I was fishing for big fish and I was worried about it running away with me, running away with my gear or whatever, um, first of all, my drag's always set, so that's not going to happen. Um, but um, all of the force would be on the back side of the cart. There's no way this cart's getting pulled over by a fish, um, especially if I have the drag set. So we'll move it back over, put it back into place, give my drag just a little bit of a tightening, go back into an arch deal. Um, I'm going to go into the next feature now, um, and that is my stakeholders. Okay. Now, I told you just a few minutes ago that the lift kit um, was less about storage and more about not having to bend over. But when I first built it, it was all about storage. And the number one thing it used to store was my stakes. All right. Now, a couple of things about this. First of all, um, keeping in mind that, uh, imagine, I can carry nine rods. So that means I used to carry nine rod holders. And they were all down here. And you might be asking... Why do you only have four stakes there, right? Four stake holders there, those clamps. Again, two inch plastic flexible clamps. I've been using them now for about two months. They haven't broken. Um, the only thing that's happened to them is the paint's starting to wear off them a little bit, but they're plastic, so I don't care. However, four here. I pulled this piece of bungee that I have connected on both sides, right? And I can stuff in between all of them, all of the remaining stakeholders that I need. And so far, it has held really, really well. I haven't had to worry about it. One of the things I do is I just nest them, if you will. The next ones will be up a little higher, right? So that they basically rest on the top of this one. By the way, you see me hitting that? That's not going nowhere. And that's just from the gripping power of those clamps. And it completely opened up the bottom of my cart again. Also gives me a nice place to stuff my high-rise camera there. All right, I know that I've said several times that this is the best thing or this is the number one thing, um, but I think I might end up here with a four-way tie um, on what the very best thing is. So I'm gonna move on to my wheels. So I got these wheels from Benjamin's. Um, I've had two sets of wheels before this. Right now, full disclosure, I don't put my cart in the water, um, but I do use my cart just about every day. Um, if not, I, I would say a slow fishing week for me is four days on the beach. So these wheels get used. The wheels that came with the original angler lasted less than a month. And in addition to that, once they self-destructed, um, couldn't replace them you couldn't fix them you couldn't get bearings for them or whatever in fact if you see right here that there used to be about a six inch quote unquote axle that went in there it had a cap on one end it came out i had to use a sawzall to get them off because they had welded themselves to uh that axle but i got them out uh met with benjamin 
Benjamin helped me out, got the axles from him, got the uh, uh, clamps for it. Um, by the way, full disclosure, not a single thing on this car is sponsored, nothing. Everything I either built myself, paid for, um, or paid to have made. Um, so, these wheels have been fantastic. Now, I will tell you, those sand hubs, right? The only thing wrong with them is that they don't have a Benjamin sticker on them. So Nathan, if you're listening to me, from now on when you send those out, they should come pre-installed with your stickers. All right, but I haven't done a doggone thing to these things. I get home, I hose my cart off. I haven't touched these uh, since I bought them. I am almost deliberately trying to destroy them because I don't want to do any maintenance on them or whatever. Um, because I plan to fish just like I'm fishing now and I want to make a go of this YouTube thing with this. I plan to uh, really, really be depending on these things. Um, I've had these wheels in their current state uh, going back to August. So, what, we're at six months now, uh, seven months now, and I haven't done so much as put grease on them or nothing. All I've done is rub them out. I think that's all that I had um, to do. Uh, please, if you've got any questions, any comments, any concerns, uh, ideas, by the way, I, this isn't done. I told you I've got some extra things that are coming um, that I'm going to uh, do to it. But uh, if you've got any advice, uh, please feel free to share it in the comments below. Um, looking forward to interacting with you. I hope to see you on the beach. Um, one of those additions that I'm going to do is right here, bum, bum, the piece of slap, scrap that I have from making those. I'm actually going to make a flag holder, so pretty soon you're going to be able to see a big old flag sticking out there um, that's also going to act um, as a stake in the ground and the off chance that I catch a great white, which we all know um, isn't going to happen. Now, that pole hasn't moved except for that one time, so I think we can all clear, be clear that it's probably time uh, for me to move on. All right. Well, as you can see, I haven't been interrupted a single time. Um, that rod has barely done anything i don't think there's any fish in this trough it's probably time to move on i want to thank you for um watching and uh stick around for a few minutes i'm going to go ahead and uh, leave the 360 running i'm going to go up the beach i'm going to see if i can't find any more fish uh or any fish at this point i haven't had a single bite yet um but who knows maybe we'll catch the big one aloha and thank you for watching One more thing, and this is very important, maybe the most important thing that I leave you with today. If any of you happen to talk to my wife, this cart and everything that goes in it only cost me 250 bucks. Feel me? All right.